Okay, we are going to calculate this integral, but we are not actually going to do the integration step, but rather we can actually interpret this as areas. So let me show you. First of all, we notice we have 1 plus square root of 9 minus x squared inside. And when we have an integral of a sum, it's actually the same as the sum of these two integrals that were put down for you. So let me write this down. This is the same as saying integrating from negative 3 to 0 of 1, and you close that, the dx right here. That's the first integral. And then you add it with the next one, which you go from negative 3 to 0 as well. And you are looking at square root of 9 minus x squared dx. OK, if you want to just work this out by hand, you can find the antiderivative of 1 pretty easily. Fine. But it's not so easy anymore to find the antiderivative for square root of 9 minus x squared. You will have to study calculus too, what we call the trick substitution for that. But anyway, this is a special case. We can actually look at these two integrals with areas, and you'll see. Right here, remember, when we have an integral, we can see this as finding the area under the curve from this point to that point, right? And this is just 1. That means y is equal to 1 in the horizontal line. So let me just draw a picture right here. This is my x and y axis. And this is, let's say, 1 is right here. Okay? This is y equals to 1. And that's this function here. So it's just a straight line. And we are talking about from negative 3 to 0. And of course, this region that we have, it's just a rectangle. And if you look at the base here from 0 to negative 3, or negative 3 to 0, look at the distance wise, you get 3. And then this distance is, of course, just 1. So to find this area is nothing but just 3 times 1, which is 3. And it's positive 3 because we are above the x axis. So this is pretty much it for that one. And I will write this down first. This is equal to 3 for the first integral. And we just have to add it with this one. And we also interpret this as area. Right here, the graph was square root of 9 minus x squared. It's actually a circle centered at 0, and the radius is 3. And it's actually just the upper part, because you only have the positive square root. So let me draw this for you guys first. Let's say this is my circle. okay. <laughs> And here is negative 3, and here is negative 3. Here is positive 3, and this is 3. And to see why this is a circle, I can just put this down here for you guys. If you look at y equals to square root of 9 minus x squared, we can square both sides. So we get y squared equals to 9 minus x squared. And then bring the minus x squared to the other side, it becomes positive x squared, and you add it with y squared, and this is equal to 9, which is the same as saying 3 squared. And if you look at this equation, you should recognize that this is an equation of a circle, and the radius is 3, and the center is precisely at 0, 0, because you don't add, you don't subtract anything directly to the x, nor directly to the y. But if you look back to this, we only have the positive square root, so this is just the upper semicircle. Okay, so it's not the whole circle, it's just the upper portion. That's what we have. And now you know this is the circle, and I want to go from negative 3 to 0. Then you are just talking about this quarter circle. That's all. So you know this distance is 3, likewise, this distance is 3, and they are the radius. So the area of this, of course, you do pi times radius squared, and the radius is 3, and you square that. But this will only give you, this will give you the whole circle. You don't want that. You only want a quarter of it. So you divide it by 4. Easy fix. So write this down. 3 squared, which is, of course, 9. And then we have the pi, and of course, the denominator is 4. And that's pretty much it. Final answer, 3 plus 9 pi over 4. That's it.